Time to Build. I'm your host, Ramel London. And we are live in London and we have an incredible new talent. It is Javan Way. Hello, hello, hello. There you go. <laughs> yes, Thank the you audience for having me. are ready. He's ready. I'm ready. But you guys at home, if you want to get involved, you can tweet along using at Build Series LDN. And also, if you're watching on Facebook, leave a comment below and we will try and get to that as well. So, Javan, I'm really, really happy to be speaking with you. Oh, thank you. You have been busy. I have, I have. <laughs> and of course, you've had an incredible career so far. Like, I know you from Mandem on the Wall. Yeah. You've been on EastEnders. You've got a lead role in a Hollywood movie and soon to be superhero. Yes. <laughs> How has the journey been for you so far? It's been, it's been amazing. It's been, um, it's been a great opportunity. I'm, I'm just so grateful for getting and having this opportunity to be able to build and also build from the ground up. You know, I think that, you know, starting off from creating my own series and being in a position where you're forced to create your own opportunity. And when it gets to the point where you get to this position in which now you're starting to be recognized and your work gets valued, you're just so grateful that you've been f through it all, you know, and you can appreciate everything that you're getting now so much more. So, Definitely. yeah, I couldn't, couldn't be happier. Amazing. Did you always know you wanted to be an actor? Like, was little five-year-old Javan like, yeah, can't wait? <laughs> well, when I, was, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be an astronaut. I wanted to, um, basically, I loved, like, the solar system. Okay. And I loved, like the moon and all the planets and stuff. And I love science in school. And I was also playing football as well. And I played semi-pro football. And I got to the point where my, my younger brother and my older brother both played for Charlton. Oh, wow. And the football was in the blood. It was, you know, in the family. Like a cousin, my cousin Jordan and I, we played for Liverpool. And, and I got to the place where I was like, you know, I don't actually love football as right. much as I love acting. And I was doing acting classes from when I was young but I didn't really kind of pursue it because I was doing football and that's what we did. Okay. A young black boy from South East London, you play football or you become a rapper, you know, acting wasn't really a thing. So it got to the place where I didn't get a, um, a scholarship when I was doing uh, trials for Charlton and Palace and stuff. And I got to that place where now you go and find another club or you do something else. Right. And I used that as an opportunity to say, do you know what, do I love this enough to really go through it and, and pursue this? No, I don't. I love acting. I've been acting and doing classes from when I was like 12 years old. And that was my love. That was my first passion. And so I said, you know what, let's do it. Applied to the Brit school and yeah, everything went from there. Amazing. Well, it's working out, isn't it? Yes, man. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, as mentioned, you star as the lead character in The First Purge, which for those who haven't seen it, it is the prequel story to the franchise. Mm -hmm. And it recently broke the record for being the most successful installment out of all the purges. Yes, well done. thank you. So let's take a look at you in action. Thank you. Huge. I absolutely love it. Now, of course, this was your first major role in a Hollywood film. Yep. Talk me through the call. Wow. Oh, the call. So it was, um, it was, it was very exciting. It was, uh, so I did, July last year, I got uh, a self-tape. And it was, at the time, it, I didn't know it was for The Purge because they kind of keep everything top secret. Of course. And I was like, oh, this character seems pretty cool. And I did the tape and didn't hear anything back for like, six weeks and then I happened to coincidentally be going to LA at the time in September and so I'm getting ready to get on my flight and then my agent calls me and he's like oh Javan they um they want to fly you out a week earlier because they want to see you for the purge I was like the purge I didn't audition for the purge yeah these times it was called um island experiment and so I was like okay so I went out a week earlier and then I did a a, a screen test with the casting directors and like as an actor, once you get out of an audition, you either know that you've like killed it or you're like, Ugh. and sometimes it can go either way. You can be in a position where it's like, you feel like it was a bad audition, but you still get the role and you feel yeah. like you killed it. And you're like, why didn't I get a recall? Yeah. And this one, I just kind of felt like, yo, this is, this is, if this is not mine, then uh, something's wrong, man. Cause right. I felt the energy in that one. And so, uh, Three days later, I got a call from my manager and he said, oh, like the, the casting director wants you to get on a Skype call with um, Gerard, which is the, the director. And he's like, okay, do, you know, stay in your American accent. It's going to be an audition. And oh, so they want to- on wanna, the phone? Yeah, and on the Skype call, yeah. Oh my you know, God. That they want to <laughs> prove that you can do the accent and blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, okay, cool. I get on the Skype, Gerard comes on, he's eating some cereal. I was like, yo, this is the weirdest like recall 
acting audition that I've ever done. Definitely. And then he gets on, he's like, hey, Javon, what's going on, man? And I was like, oh. And at this point, like, I'm like, hey, Gerard. And I'm, st I'm in my accent. And he goes to me, man, I know that you're British, bro. Like, just lose the accent. We, we, like, oh, I, I, yeah. And he just said, look, I've come to, to say to you, like, uh, this is not an audition. I want you to start my movie, man. And, and that, was, that, was, that was literally... Yeah, he was like, I loved your your tape, I loved your performance, and then we spoke about the character, what he yeah. loved about my performance and in the audition, and yeah, man, I just like just Amazing. broke down. It's like, yeah, everything so you cried. Been working for, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, every oh. like every every like <laughs> big role I get, I, I get so emotional of and kind of like, yeah, man, it's it's all a big 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 milestone for me. So yeah, got that. But then I had a madness because I didn't have a visa. Right, oh, and so gosh. had to get my visa, and we had two weeks until the shoot, and it was it's basically basically impossible to get a visa in that time. It got expedited, everything. They got wow. Congress involved to try and get it universal, put their arm and leg out, and it was amazing. And coincidentally, I managed to get the um, get the call to say, look, yeah, you know, they, it's it's come back, but it's it's a request for more evidence. And so at that point, I thought I'd lost the role. No, and they said if it doesn't come by Tuesday then that's it. Literally Tuesday, I'm going to the airport with my younger brother to drop him back to London. Right. And I get a call saying, this is a miracle, but yeah, it's just came through and we need to get you on the first flight to Canada. So yeah, man, it was crazy. Look at that. That really turned around. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Okay. So the role of Isaiah, I've seen the film. You smashed it. Thank you. Absolutely you smashed it. So how did you get that accent so good? Because you are pretty good at it. It's training, man. Like, okay. yeah, like, you know, I think naturally being in the UK, we consume a lot of American content, you know? And so all of the content that we consume, you have like an ear for it because you're so used to hearing that, whether okay. you're mimicking American rappers or whatever yeah. it is. So I kind of had a base on it. And they say that if you can, if you can sing, you have a pretty good ear. Okay. And can so, you sing? Uh, I can hold a note. <laughs> uh, and so... Go on. What's, yeah. what's the hardest word you had to... to overcome or, or the sing hardest a, word so, sing us a little american tune <laughs> so, uh, what do you want to hear um i used to think that i was breaking down okay that, that was like my elvis version of it elvis you, a, <laughs> you know the ones there okay um, that was all right so, <laughs> so this is how you you practice yeah, yeah. and i just took like i took you kind of base accent around like a few words so like okay. because it was new york like sun is a is a thing like what's going on son and sun? they like they got like a thing that's going on where the mouth is pretty closed up in new york okay. specifically like they get it you know what i'm saying so that's very 50 cent in it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just exactly. talking for your teeth yeah <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, got the base of it, and then I got a dialect coach for a bit to help me to kind of perfect it, and Wicked. yeah, I was good to go. Wicked. Well, it doesn't stop there because your next move mm -hmm. is as a superhero. It is. You are going to be playing Cyborg in the series Doom Patrol. This is so excited, um, and I've also heard that you've always wanted to be a superhero. I have always wanted to be. a That's superhero. That's amazing. The craziest thing, like literally, um, I was thinking about okay, what what black superheroes are there yeah. in which I could play, and. I was going back when I was on set. Like Gerard, he he, he was like, "Man, you're gonna be like the, the next Black Spider Man, man. Like <laughs> you're gonna be a superhero, bro." And I I literally took that seed, yeah. and was like, "Okay, I'm gonna be a superhero." Amazing. And I did it. I even did an article with um the Metro saying that you know I want to be a superhero. I would love to play Mars Morales, yeah. um, which is uh the Black Spider Man, and and at the time you know they had the Justice League film and Cyborg was it was even like okay Miles Morales or Cyborg Cyborg's right. already taken I, I, it, in my recollection I have no idea they're going to do any shows where they're going to have another Cyborg so yeah. I'm like okay that's the only character I can play and then lo and behold literally about three weeks later I yeah get a get a call to say you know there's there's interest in you for for Cyborg in Doom Patrol and you are Dream speaking country, things ma into existence. I absolutely yeah, love that. Thank you. And I've, I've noticed that you've already started training mm -hmm. for this role. I mean, yep. Cyborg is half human, half machine. Yep. So have you got a training regime? Like, what are you going to... I mean, he's quite ripped, you know. If you've seen his Instagram, <laughs> Japan's all right, you know. His buddy's all right. Hi, so, <laughs> so just saying, isn't it? <laughs> so, <laughs> so what are you doing to get fit? Um, I'm doing five days a week in the gym. Woo. Um, I'm always, to, to be honest, it's not even just about you, your regime, it's your diet. Okay. People don't realize your diet is like 70%, man. Teach me, bro. And it's like, yeah, you, you, I, was, I used to work out like crazy, but I would eat loads of crap. 
and right. it would just undo everything that I'm doing. And yeah. I haven't even been doing much cardio, but just from like my diet being really strict, you know, low carbs or no carbs or no carbs after eight, lots of meat, lots of salad, vegetables, and it just starts to lean me up and then boxing as well. Okay. Um, just to get the trim and yeah, I'm gonna put on a uh, I'm gonna put on a lot of weight. Still, you know, building up and I've put on quite a bit since I've started. Okay. But yeah, yeah I'm going for it, man. Good, good. Well, this guy does not stop. Your next film release, Versus, which is out on the 19th of October, yep. you play a character called Blaze, which is a battle rapper. Yep. So this is a different type of training. Mm -hmm. So how did you prepare for that role? Blaze, Blaze was cool, man. Blaze was a character which was like like, I love like, the battle rap scene, you know, the don't flop scene and just kind of the Eight Mile as a film, which, you know, most people love if you love battle rap. And yeah. so when I got the audition for, for um, Versus and, and Ed Lilly, the director, he came and he, he said like, oh, I just, I loved your, as I did a tape for you, he's like, you know, I love what you did on your tapes. So I wanted to bring you in. And we spoke about the character, who Blaze was. And it, it, he was also, at this point, I started to kind of do a lot more drama stuff. So, you know, I was doing okay. Doctor Who, EastEnders, et cetera. And yeah. Blaze was a bit more of a joker. Okay. And so I was like, you know what? Like, I, I, I still want to do as much comedy as I am doing straight acting. And yeah. so this is a nice balance. And he's a great character, you know? So I was like, yeah, let's do this. And battle rap is something that I, I love. And you know, musically, I just love getting involved in that sort of stuff. And it was just fun. And, you know, the lyrics are written by real battle rappers from Don't Flop. Oh, and amazing. so, yeah, spoke to them about, you know, the delivery and everything. And just, yeah, just in my bedroom, just in my mirror, just <laughs> cussing out myself, you know what I mean? And, um, yeah, it I was beautiful, that. man. So versus, yeah, it's going to be a great project. It's, you know, really grounded yeah. UK battle rap film. And yeah, man, it's yeah, that's that's definitely one to watch. I mean, you already shown us your singing skills, so uh, oh, Lord. uh how about some uh, rap lyrics? Some battle rap, <laughs> battle rap. All right, um, <laughs> I'm putting him proper on the spot right now, yeah, but that's that's this is what we do, this is what we do. Love that, it's professional. All right, so you want me to battle rap, you want to hear something that you can see. Right now I'm sitting down on a sofa and I might as well be on the TV screen hey. drinking a cup of tea with my friend C. But where's P? Because he dropped me off before I was here, but he didn't want to be here, so he had to leave. He went to King's Cross, but now he's coming back to see me on the TV. And let's hold it there, because you don't want to see me get... Woo! Yeah, so I, I got carried away there. I was enjoying it. I was enjoying it. Listen, Brit school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, All that, that learning. Was a, yeah, has to. That's where Bashi went, Adele yeah. went, Katie yeah. B went. So yeah. clearly music is in your blood. It's in the blood, baby. <laughs> well, I've actually got a question uh, from social media. Lydia wants to know, on your strict diet, what food are you missing the most? Oh, um, I'm missing... <sighs> probably probably chocolate because I don't I don't eat I don't really eat sweets but so my sweet intake is is chocolate yeah and I can't eat any chocolate and so chocolate something I miss everything else like when it comes to foods I don't really like eat much pizza and stuff like that so the the fatty foods kind of are, are cool I love I love chicken and and fish and so that stuff is kind of replaceable but yeah it's the little the little snacks that you can't eat uh, I'm having more nuts having to have nuts instead of, you know, popcorn or things Aww. that I'd usually eat or consume. So it's like, yeah, I miss chocolate and I miss just being able to just kind of pick something up and, and just eat it. Or even juice, fruit juice. I can only oh. drink a certain amount of fruit juice because it has so much sugar, so a lot of water. Um, so fruit juice is something that you just go to the fridge and you just take out and you drink, of you course. know what I mean? So now having to think, <laughs> oh, I can't drink that juice or if it's from, con you know what I mean? It's yeah. like... <laughs> So it's the little things, it's the little things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I respect this diet. Yeah, thank you. Just pass me the notes and I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> I will try. Well, as well as Breaking America, you've had a lot of online success as well. Most recently in the short feature, Shiro Story. Mm -hmm. So part one and two currently has over five million views mm. and part three is on the way. So considering you've been really busy with like major TV and like film roles, yeah. what attracted you to this one? I thought it was just like, so Ratman, the creator, the writer, he, he, he sent me a DM on Instagram and he was like, yo man, like, I've got this project that I want to do. It's, uh, it's, I don't know if you do music videos, but like, I'd love you to play Shara, but it's not like a music video. So listen to it, see what you think. And, um, and I listened to it. And when I heard it, I was like, yo, this is not 
a music yeah. video. This is a script. It's just, you just perform the script. If you literally take everything in which you've wrapped and we wrote it down, it would be fully laid out, fully formatted. It even plays the characters, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So heard it and I was like, yeah, I'd love to be a part of it. Um, but it was like, I always have to bring in my brother, Percy, and I was just like, yeah, Amazing. I'll do it. But we got to get P involved, you know what I mean? And he was like, like yeah, let's let's have a chat, let's see it, and and it got him involved. And th at that point, it was just kind of you know we did the first one, and we were just on board as actors, and it was amazing. It you know blew everyone away, and we was like, look, this has got real legs. Like let's really get involved. And then we said, yeah, let's come on board and let's help to exec the project and, yeah. and help to produce. And so we came on board on that side, and and then you know spoke with. Um, Island to try and get a production deal on it and get Rap Man a, um, a record deal on those tunes as well. And, and it was just a beautiful opportunity to take something which was so different. You know, music marries the kind of, you know, the, the acting world and the story world. And Rap Man is a phenomenal writer. Everything yeah. is written, he writes himself and director, you know what I mean? And his vision is so clear. It was just like, okay, this is, now we've got like a little rap pack. There's so many other projects that we're gonna be creating together and doing together, but the initial attraction was just the writing and the story. And I was so engaged. I was like, if I'm so engaged, you know, just listening to this, imagine when the visuals are there. And if we get great performances and it's gonna blow everyone away and, and it did, so. Amazing. Yeah. I mean, I love how involved you are in everything you do. And you've also gone on to create your own platform, The Wall of Comedy, which mm -hmm. is doing incredibly. Thank so you. how important do you think it is for like young creatives to be able to have their own platform and create their own projects? And like, of course, like Ratman, going from just having an idea, getting you involved to now being signed and who knows what's next. So yeah. how important is that? I think like it's, it's the most... I think everyone's journey is different, so I can't speak for everyone, because you know, like some of my friends, they went on the straight acting route and just kind of got an agent, got jobs, did really well in those jobs, got more opportunities. But for me, it was always about creating my own opportunities, you know, and, and from creating Mandem on the Wall to now the Wall of Comedy, it was, you know, I always say to myself, if I don't ever get a role from anyone, ever, am I still gonna be in a position that I wanna be in? Yeah. And if the answer to that is no, then what do I need to do in order to make sure everything is in my own power? Okay, I'll create my own show, distribute it myself. Off the back of that, if no one picks it up, I'll keep making that, I'll write my own films. If Hollywood doesn't pick me up, I'll write a Hollywood film, I'll cast myself in it, I'll Amazing. build it out. And that's the same with the platform. And then not only wanting to create projects for myself, but seeing how there's so many young people which are creating work that you know they don't get the chance for the Channel 4s or the BBCs or the Skies to give them that platform. And so if we can find that middle ground and help to support them, then you know they're winning and so creating that platform the platform wasn't really for us it was for for everyone else and yeah. given uh, you know an opportunity to be able to have people's work seen and and regarded so that they can take that next level amazing so, yeah you know the wall of comedy is is growing it's now the the largest comedy platform in europe and Jeez. we're looking to take it out thank you and um yeah, build it out in the US and do the same thing and um and yeah just looking for strategic partners at the moment to help to do that and yeah, keep creating, man. Amazing. Well, we actually have a question from the audience. Wicked. Oh, hello, he's ready. He's so ready. I love it. <laughs> <He's a young. laughs> Go for it, sir. Hello, hello Javon. Um, I would like to start off by saying your jacket looks fly. Where did oh, you get you, it from, bro? Um, I actually got this um, from Haddon uh, PR company. Um, and it's a... Alpha Industries? It's an Alpha Industries. Yeah, I know them. Yeah, I know yeah, that yeah. brand. It's, it's, <laughs> I love these jackets. The length, the... Yeah, you, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I would just like... Because I'm a young, aspiring actor myself. Mm -hmm. So I would just like to talk about... Um, how, how, do, how can I really break through in the industry? Because I'm doing a few things now, but I really want to make it like how, how you are now. So how do I get to that position? I think... How to get to that position is, I think, ask yourself the same question I asked myself. Like, what, what are you doing in order to make sure that you get to that position? And working backwards, you know? So if, you, if your end goal is to uh, be in, uh, I don't know, a Hollywood film, what do you need to do in order to get there? So my thing was, okay, in order to be there, I need to have someone see my work and which is gonna give me that opportunity to get the work that needs to be seen. I need an agent to get an agent. I need a reel to get a reel. I need work. Yep. No one else is gonna make that work for me. I need to make my own work. To make my own work, I need uh, videographers. I need a script. I ain't got a script. I gotta write a script. 
And then, you know, once you work backwards and you understand where you want to get to, you don't, it allows you to kind of see the journey and facilitate everything that you need to do and want to do. And then just kind of getting around people who see the same vision as you. I've been lucky enough to have, you know, my, my, my brothers around me, you know, D, when we did Man on the Wall, Percy, Man on the Wall, the Wall of Comedy, and now, you know, building our acting journeys to be able to have people around be around each other to be able to facilitate each other's journey, you know? And having that, that team is, is, is solid and it's important. And without the team that, which I have now and, and have had, it would have been a lot, di a lot more difficult for me. So finding those peers, those mutants, we call them, you know? People which are, are they're different from everyone else. They like, not everyone sees the vision, but you got the mutants in which everyone looks at them and they're like, yo, you work too hard or like, you don't want to party, you don't want to do this. And it's like, yeah, like we're not normal. We're not, this is not the norm for, for you guys. It's not what you see as normal, but this is our norm, you know? And from the outside looking in, it looks weird, but this is just, this is what we know. So finding a team and then just hard work, man. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And so you can have all the talent in the world if you're not putting in a graft, then it's, it's, it's pointless. Amazing. Oh, so I'm going to have to stop you there because we've got to wrap it up. But cool. Of course, Javan, you've been seeing things into existence so amazingly. Thank what's you. next for you? Uh, what's next is just just concentrate. I just did a, um, a, a short film, which is um, based on a friend of mine, um, Amani, who was stabbed seven times and, um, and basically playing his story. So it's going to be in a spoken word form. Um, and it's a script that I, that I wrote in a spoken word that was written um, and playing him and also co-directing um, with, with uh, Rich Richard. And so that is, it's now in the bag and now we're going to the edit on that. Amazing. And so, yeah, try and get that, that edited while I'm concentrating and focused on, on Cyborg, putting everything into this role now and just kind of, you know, building that out while still maintaining and building out and growing my company. And so, yeah, man, and looking forward to Versus on, in October and Shower's Story on, in, in this month in a few weeks time. And yeah, just keep it going, keep inspiring, keep trying to, to, to build and, and yeah, being grateful, man. He doesn't stop. Half man, half amazing. I love it. Well, thank, thank you. you so much. Can we give another big round of applause to Javan Wade? <laughs> thank you for watching Build. Um, you can, of course, catch uh, Javan on Doom Patrol next year. Yes. And versus next month. It's been amazing. Thank you. I've been Royal London. Thanks again. See you.